Welcome back to Bama USA's Bad Beat 2, live from the Commerce Casino in Commerce, California. We are in the largest poker room casino in the world, a place many people are looking to tip the odds in their favor. We go now to our last amateur fight, where if you're doing anything to do with tipping, it's tipping the scales in your favor as a fan, as the heavyweights are about to take center stage or center ring on this card. Take a look at the big boys. Sean Harris from The Body Shop under Antonio McKee, MFC lightweight champion. Six feet tall, 215 pounds of wrestling and Muay Thai influence style. And he's going to be taking on Christopher Schaumer. Six foot one, 215 pounds as well from my hometown of Huntington Beach, California. A former Marine sniper, dangerous in the cage and with a rifle. We see these guys match up again. Both men coming in at six feet one or six feet tall. Not a big difference there. Both weighing in at 215. Both touting skills at both stand up and the ground. How cool would it be to see them display all of that? The Buffalo, Christopher Schaumer in the red. Sean Harris in the blue. And it is on. Schaumer right away, aggressive right after the, the bump of gloves. He's got Sean Harris up against the cage, double underhooks. Schaumer being very careful to put his hands up against the cage, but not grab the cage. And a very savvy Harris right there, keeping a knee down so he couldn't get kneed himself. And now he's up for it. Heavyweight scheduled for three two-minute rounds. Schaumer just bullying Harris right now with those double underhooks. That's a, a, a superior position to have the underhooks as opposed to the overhooks. Now with an arm and guillotine set up. Yeah, now with a, a front headlock situation, it could uh, very well turn into a guillotine if Schaumer is not careful. Schaumer in a single leg. Single leg with his head on the outside is Schaumer. Harris defends, peppering shots all the way. Schaumer is a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Harris coming from Antonio McKee's body shop means he is very familiar with high-level wrestling on the ground. Yeah, there are a lot of good wrestlers out there, specifically Antonio McKee himself. Yeah. What? An an another Peruvian necktie attempt, two in one night. You'll be lucky to see one once a year. Uh, this one not quite as uh, successful as the uh, other ones. Now diving for uh, an arm bar, didn't really get it. Now he's in another weird position, a triangle. Uh, he's in, uh, the, the legs are scissored. He's not in the triangle position, but he's working for one. He's got 25 seconds to try to do it. Yep, the round ticking away to a close. Switching to an arm bar. He may have something here. Christopher Schammer, the buffalo. If he can extend that arm, we got to win. Nope. Harris able to po poke his head out, keep his arm free. Schammer back again. Another triangle attempt. This time he's only got about five seconds. He wants to hit it. Mike Beltran watching closely as the round comes to a close, and I got my wish. Schaumer moving really with the fluidity on the ground of a, almost of a Frank Mir of a heavyweight who moves like a smaller fighter. Great submission attempts and skills here. Let's look at some of the highlights from this first opening round. Schaumer with that right hand lead starting out, and then right here going for the rolling arm bar, just all over the place for a very large man. Yeah, uh, do not adjust your sets. That is a heavyweight diving for arm bars. I just want to make that clear. Absolutely. A lot of action around one coming round number two. Can they keep it up? Find out right now. Scheduled for three. Great catch. Schaumer in the red, Harris in the blue. Harris caught the kick, picked it up. Schaumer, instead of saying, all right, I'm going to fight this takedown, pulls guard so comfortable with his jiu-jitsu. He pulls guard here. He can go for submission attempts like we saw him do in the first. Yeah, you see, already see the, the legs moving. A lot of professional mixed martial artists, Maurice Har uh, Smith, for example, uh, Mo from the first UFC heavyweight champion, not big on the closed guard. He feels like you're limiting your, your offense. You can only do so much, cover up. He likes more of an active guard, butterfly, such. And, and we're seeing Schammer, I guess, mirroring that kind of mentality where he's very active off his back. Yeah, there's multiple options. I mean, he's switching from the closed guard, which he has now, to the butterfly to open guard. Uh, he's, he stayed pretty fluid in the first. We'll see what he does here in the second. Harris controlling him. He's got his arms around his head and an underhook with his right arm. Now being stood up by Mike Beltran. Not enough action, Beltran says. Get back up, boys. Schaumer did a good job of neutralizing any ground and pound possibilities for Harris at all. So kick again, and you see now that uh, Harris is looking to catch those kicks. That, that is one of the things that, that Schaumer's not doing with as much speed and proficiency as those kicks, and that's why they're getting caught. 
Yep, but he is getting takedowns. He got one right there with a the single leg. He's got Harris on his butt, looking to pass the guard here. Harris looking to secure half guard at least while he tries to figure out if he can get out of this. Probably going to try to Kimura that left arm that's around his head. You see him reaching for the wrist. Shots to the midsection by Schammer. Imagine when this guy has his black belt. <laughs> scary, scary notion. I haven't seen anything purple that scary since Barney the Dinosaur. And there's the Kimura attempt we were talking about. Yep. He's only got 10 seconds to do it. Can he do it? If he can get that arm out, get the wrist out from, uh, from, from Harris's grip, he can have this. He's only got five seconds to do it. He's cranking the Kimura, but Harris is rolling with it. He's cranking. He's cranking. Harris is going with the flow, and then that is something I guarantee you he learned under Antonio McKee at the body shop. Once again here, we see, just like the first round, after the second, Schammer, the large man, not getting slammed here by Harris. Yeah, we saw some uh, some leg kicks and some more striking in the round, too, but it was still mostly Schammer on his back, Harris on top. What did I say the last couple of fights? When you're on top, judges are normally going to score for you, even if you are being effective on the bottom. He wasn't quite as effective on the bottom this time. Very hard round to score. And that round just about to get underway. Harris in the blue. Schammer in the red. Beltran in the beard. Third round getting underway. Schammer wasting no time diving in for a takedown immediately. It was like Harris thought about guillotine there, but instead he got his legs in too close. Schammer has a single leg. Nope. Good sprawl. Back to a front headlock. Good sprawl. Harris looking to parry around the back, but being denied so far by Schammer. Schammer here on all fours. Pulling guard, okay, he did, it, he did it once before, he does it again here in the third. Again, ground and pound, part of the equation here for Harris, but Schaumer's really not allowing much of that to happen. Yeah, he's doing a good job. You see how he's, oh, he was holding his head, keeping his posture down so he can't rear up and strike. Uh, but he's also kind of limiting himself with what submissions he can go after. And if you pull guard, you got to start going for submissions because you're putting yourself in a, a, a sort of a dangerous position. Half the round is already gone, so we need to start working here. Yeah, Schammer's guard very active, though. He, he is, he's not going for submissions carelessly just to try to get a submission, but he is constantly on the move. He's not simply just pulling down the head of Harris and waiting. Yeah, Harris isn't doing a lot on top either, uh, which is a good and bad thing. Obviously, he's not hurting you, but at the same time, he's not opening himself up to try to, 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 to leave you room to go for submissions. Looking to pound his way out to a definitive win, at least in this round, is Harris. Will that be enough? Again, Harris on top. A little bit more active here, starting to see some strikes. And that's the problem, is that you have to deal with the, the limbs and the style on the ground of Schammer. It makes you have less initiative to, to start an offense from there because you're afraid of getting caught. A very high guard here by Schaumer. This uh, is a dangerous guard to have. It makes it a lot easier to switch to an armbar, triangle, whatever you're going for. But again, it, it also nullifies Harris's offense. Okay, now he's out. Let's see what he can do in the final seconds here. And that's it. Three heavyweight rounds of mixed martial arts action. Again, another very, very close uh, competitive fight. This is the very opening of the fight. They, they touch gloves and then boom, right away, Schaumer, not wasting any time throwing that right straight that landed. Harris knows now, all right, it's my first mixed martial arts contest. When I shake hands, defense goes up right away. And from a heavyweight, that level of activity and pacing, wow. Yeah, very early on, we saw a lot from Schaumer as far as diving for submissions, really going for it. It kind of waned off in rounds two and three, leaving Harris on top. I would, I would probably call it about an even fight, but judges love the guy on top. I think they're going to go with Harris. Okay, well, let's see if Harris wins on top or if he got stampeded by the Buffalo Schammer. Marco Rodriguez will reveal. By unanimous decision out of the red corner, Christopher Buffalo Schammer. Well, there are people in attendance who are either R.J. Clifford fans or they saw the fight the same way you did. <laughs> they booed the unanimous decision by Schaumer. That was really close. I don't know. Again, top position, again, a lot on the ground where the fight took place a lot of. Goes to Harris, but the guard, the active guard, and, and a lot of the submission attempts by Schaumer, the Buffalo, 
that might have been, I think, to me, that's what might have tipped it over. Yeah, you're right. It's very close. I can definitely see the the uh, the argument there for the judges, but I think a lot of these fans uh, have, a, have a good case for why they're booing. Absolutely. And a great case made by both guys for the matchmaking of Brett Roberts and Bama USA when you have a fight that close Absolutely. with two very talented heavyweights. And really, it's a coin toss at the end, and some people will agree or disagree with either decision that could have been made. Here's a decision we can't make. We're going to break right now, but when we come back, we can make another decision. That's to share more Bama Bad Beat 2 with you. Stay with us. More coming up.